It is God's desire for his children to experience him as father in the way that he is and not in the distortion of the trauma that sometimes we have faced in this life. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to just live a life of grace, a life of forgiveness, a life of release, release, because holding on to pain and trauma serves one person. It serves you. It serves to destroy you. It serves to make you not achieve that which God has called for you to achieve. Hallelujah. Nothing is too difficult for him. As the song is predicated on knowing our Father, these words we're singing, they're predicated on knowing who our God is and what he is capable of. And that is that he is a God that loves his children and will move heaven and earth in order for his children to be fulfilled and to live lives that are fulfilled. Hallelujah. Knowing God is the key to leading a confident and victorious life. Even when you're in the midst of the most challenging, the most difficult of your situations, knowing God is the key. I'm so grateful to have you, Brother Joe, in our midst today. May God continue to strengthen you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we prayed for you last week. We have been praying for you through the week. For those of you who are not here, Joe uh, lost his mom, and he's the only son, and it's a tough situation that only those who've been through can begin to... Uh, to relate to, but Joe, your father in heaven knows. Amen. And anyone else in any situation like what Joseph and Tarin are going through, we are going through different situations, varying degrees of difficulty. Your heavenly father wants you to know that when you begin to know him, you begin to live a life full of confidence and victory. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The Bible says in the New King James Version, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Is it honest? Okay, let, let's read it together, brethren. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. I love it in another version of the Bible, the New Living Translation says that fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Hallelujah. Understanding God, knowing God is the beginning, it is the foundation of wisdom. The things I have been saying and what we've been praying about in a, in a moment's past some of the failures that we as men, and yes, it is Father's Day today, we celebrate as men, but we men also, we take uh, accountability for our failures because the failure of a man in a society is something very serious. God has called men to stand and be pillars of the society. God has called us men to stand and be leaders in our homes. And when we lead our homes well, and when we raise children in the ways of God, then society begins to receive healing from the wars and, 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 the, and the problems that the enemy has caused in this society. We begin to see that healing takes place in a generation. When men stand up, and begin to live a life that is full of wisdom and understanding. But for a man or anybody for that matter to live a life that is full of wisdom, they must fear God. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning. People who do not fear God have not even begun to be wise. 
you are going to meet people in this world who will say they are very knowledgeable and very wise. You will meet some uh, mature gentlemen and ladies who are experts in their fields, they are professors, they are consultants, they have had careers spanning 40, 50 years. They are the leading authority in their field and they are called on television stations and whenever there is anything that happens in this 24 hour news cycle, they will be called, they will sit there because they are called the wise of this society. Someone ought to tell them that you have not even begun to be wise if you do not fear the Lord. Your life is foolishness. Another verse in Proverbs says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says that those who do not fear God, they are foolish. This world is full of well-read, foolish men and women who have not begun to have wisdom because they do not have the fear of the Lord. The Bible says that it is the foundation of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One, that one results in good judgment. Good judgment is what is needed for the decisions that need to be made. As a nation, we are walking into an election. We are listening to debates these people are going on our television screens and they are promising us uh, the world. They are promising to fix the health service. They are promising to fix the housing crisis. They are promising to fix the, 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 the crime uh, epidemic in this country. They are trying to tell us that they are going to exercise good judgment. But we have seen them over and over again when we give them the responsibility to make decisions, most of them are not exercising good judgment. This is why this nation and the nations of the world are going down a, a path that is destroying lives. This is why people that call themselves wise and call themselves decision makers are making decisions that are causing the, the destruction of our children. They are making things worse. But God is saying that there are people who are called by my name. On this Father's Day, he is reminding men, men who are called by his name. He says, if you fear me, you will begin to walk in wisdom and you will have good judgment. Good judgment for your family. Good judgment for your business. Good judgment in this society. Hallelujah. So understanding the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is it, it's not about us being terrified and scared of God. This is not what the fear of the Lord means. The fear of the Lord is a profound respect, a profound reverence, a profound awe for God. The fear of the Lord is recognizing God's power, his authority, and holiness and responding with humility and obedience. And so this is why we preach the fear of God, the fear of the Lord in this church. A profound respect. Those of you who are on this WhatsApp group that we call the Pastor's Notice Board, you will find a message I wrote last night. The purpose for these messages that I send periodically, it is because I am reminding as that we ought to have a profound respect and honor for God. The message for those of you who didn't see it, I said, please plan yourself, do whatever you can to make sure you are in the house of the Lord in the place of meeting on time because we are able to do this when we go for our interviews for our jobs. Those of you who have gone for interviews for our visas, we are able to get there on time. Those of us who have gone to driving tests, we are ready to get there on time. Some of us who have gone and, and, and on dates and courting uh, people that we want to make our, our significant others, we have been there on time. I want to teach and to preach in this church the profound reverence and respect for God. 
because this is the beginning of wisdom. It is when we begin to be very lackluster and very uh, casual with God that we are in danger of not fearing God, of not having the fear of God. Hallelujah. It is a reverence and awe for God. And when we have a reverence and awe for God, we fear God and we recognize his greatness and his majesty. And this reverence shapes our thoughts, shapes our actions, it shapes our decisions. The fear of God is humility. Fearing the Lord is acknowledging that we are not the ultimate authority. It is acknowledging that we ought to humbly submit ourselves to his word and his purpose for our lives. Hallelujah. The fear of the Lord is obedience to God. The fear of the Lord is reading the scriptures and from the scriptures gaining instruction. And when we receive this instruction, we know that this instruction is to be obeyed. The fear of the Lord is knowing that our opinions, as comforting as they may be to us, do not matter if they are contrary to the word of God. Hallelujah. The fear of the Lord is knowing that what we want for ourselves, if it is contrary to the word of God, does not matter because we are submitted to the code and the command of our God, our Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. That's where wisdom begins. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm finding this journey of fatherhood profoundly, uh, let me say I'm in awe. I was, I was going to say I'm, I'm, I'm scared of this journey, but I'm not because God gives me strength. But I'm, I'm finding that it's requiring a lot of wisdom. I am beginning to realize as my children go older, and I'm beginning to see their personality, and I'm beginning to, I'm sending one of them off to secondary school and, and just dealing with certain things of them growing up and becoming adolescents and having their own mind, I am beginning to find that I need extreme wisdom. Why? Because God has entrusted me with raising these two men, these two individuals. And if my sons end up becoming great men of God in this society who change the lives of others, who impact the lives of those who are around them, then I'll be able to say, thank you, Lord, you have helped me to do my work. If I'm able to raise these two young men who are now upstairs, and when they become old, they're able to stand and become responsible. They're able to uh, marry a young lady and make her happy and help God to heal her of any wounds that she has picked up in life and are able to have their own children and able to raise them if Christ tarries to come back, then I will say that, Lord, I have done something. By your grace, I'm thankful. But what now also is a, a, a reality to me is that I'm raising men who also may end up being an absolute problem and headache in society. Mass murderers were raised by someone. Or they were failed by someone. Abusers in society, they came from someone. They were raised by someone, they were abandoned by someone, they were hurt by someone, they were abused by someone. But I'm talking about them in this moment when a man, a woman goes and picks up a gun in place like American begins to shoot in a school. When a man 
goes and picks up a knife in the streets of London, a young man, and decides to stab someone for a mobile phone. This young man was raised by someone. He was abandoned by someone. He was abused by someone. He was neglected by someone. And God, I'm, I'm before God and I'm saying, Lord, what kind of men am I going to raise in this society? What kind of men am I releasing into this society? And he begins to say to me that, my son, I am able to give you wisdom. I'm able to give you the ability to make the right decisions for your children, for your wife, for the church. I am giving you wisdom. But if you want to walk and live in this wisdom, he's saying to me, you need to develop a holy reverence for me. The fear of the Lord is just the beginning. Men, brothers, we can handle it. Forgive me for putting a damper on your, on your Father's Day. But we are men, we can handle it. I cannot stand here and just say, Happy Father's Day, wonderful things. The Spirit of the Lord is telling me to say to you and to also listen to this myself, that God is calling us to a life of wisdom where we are able to make decisions that are going to help God to raise men and women that are useful in this society. Hallelujah. And I'm saying to you, brothers, we can do it. If you have failed up to this day, God is saying to you that fear the Lord. Begin to fear the Lord. And he's saying that he is going to make you make great decisions. This is why I read in the NLT. He says, knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. The result of every judgment that you will do, that judgment will be a good judgment. Praise the name of the living God. This is an encouragement for us men, but it is also an encouragement to the women. It is for all of us. God is calling us to fear him. Let me just share a number of things. The impact of knowing God on our lives. The impact of fearing God and making good judgments and making decisions that are based in wisdom. Number one, number one. For those that are on this journey to knowing God, for those that are on this journey to the fear of God, to revering God, to honoring God because we are getting to know him and the more we know our father, the more we realize how awesome he is. The more we get to know our father, the more we open the word of God and we, we read the scriptures, the more we realize how magnificent he is, the more we realize how powerful he is, the more we can sing songs like what is too difficult for you, nothing is too difficult for you. When we know God, we begin to have confidence in trials. Hallelujah. Confidence in trials. Let me see by a show of hands. Let me see who's honest in this place. How many of you are going through a trial right now? Eh? About half of the room. Man, the other half is enjoying good life. <laughs> If you are going through trial right now, God is saying that you are able to have confidence in that trial if you fear God and you know him. The difference between you making on the other side stronger than you came in is how you are and what you are thinking through that trial. When you go through a trial with confidence, you are able to make the right decisions in that trial. There was a trial that uh, came upon three young men, three Hebrew men, who are in Babylon. And the king, Nebuchadnezzar, decided that he wants people to worship him. And so he builds this monument, this altar for himself. And he commands that everybody must bow to him. And there are three young men who know their father. There are three young men who know their God. 
And these three young men, they realize this is a trial for us. But the difference between them and many other young Hebrew men who the Bible doesn't name because it doesn't need to name them. They succumb to the pressure and they bow down to the image. But we know about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because these young men, they saw this trial and they said, indeed, this is a trial. But because they knew their God, because they hung out with Daniel and with such men of wisdom and of character, they said that we are not going to bow down. We refuse to bow down. Yes, we acknowledge this is a trial. And in their acknowledging and evaluating and dissecting this trial, they realize that they may die as a result of their uh, insubordination. But insubordinate we shall be, they said. That's confidence. Confidence is when you are threatened with death, but you have so much confidence that you say, I will still do even if you kill me. Because confidence says that if God wants us to survive your fire, it will not burn us. But even if he chooses for us not to survive the fire, we are still not going to bow down to you. Hallelujah. Confidence in trials, it shakes the enemy. It confuses the enemy. It confuses the enemy. You see, when the enemy was doing this work in Babylon, he saw other Hebrew young men and women bowing to the image of Nebuchadnezzar. And then the enemy began to be confused. Why are these three young men refusing? How, who, who wants to confuse the enemy in this place? I said, who wants to confuse the enemy in this place? When you are going through a trial, the most difficult of trials, when you're facing death, you turn around and you say to the enemy and all his agents, I am not bowing down and I'm not scared of death. I'm not scared of whatever it is you're bringing. So these young men, they are bound and then they are thrown into this furnace. And the enemy is ashamed and everybody else is amazed. They see four people walking into, inside of this. These young men, they had confidence in trials because they knew their God. My friends, if you do not know your God, you will not have confidence in trials. Minister Delma encouraged us about the wells. You see, the purpose of these fellowships it is that we are to be empowered with the word of God. Perhaps you miss your well this week and those who host you have posted the teaching from this week and last week. Have you watched it? I want to challenge and, 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 and admonish some of us who are being very relaxed and very uh, casual about these things. There are brethren among you who are learning things. We've been speaking about giving. That is the character of our Father. The feedback I've received from some people is they're saying that I am rethinking, I am being challenged. Why? Because God wants to bless some people. We were talking about the Word of God and the power of the Word of God and the transformative Word of God. You can miss these things and end up not having knowledge of God and when you come to face in trials, you cannot stand because you don't know your Father. When you come to church, when you go to wells, when you attend Bible study, when you have your personal time of prayer and reading the Word of God, what you are doing is you are spending time to getting to know your Father like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Don't let your well leaders have to encourage you. Come on, guys. Come, let's read. Let's study the word of God together. You be there because you are simply getting to know your God because I'm telling you, a trial is coming if it's not already there. And this trial, when it comes, it will meet a child of God that knows their father. A child that will stand in front of the trial and say that trial come you may. I know who my father is. I will not bow down. I will not bow down to your demands. Because I know who my father is. Hallelujah. Psalm 23 chapter 4 says. Even though I walk through the darkness. 
or through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Children seem to be afraid of the dark. And when you have babies, sometimes when they're growing up and you want them to sleep alone, you, you, you may have to be there in the dark room, maybe touch them, maybe shuffle around and make sure that they know you're in the room and they're able to sleep. Why? Because they are afraid of darkness. Human beings, we are naturally afraid of darkness. But when a child begins to know that dad, mom is here, that fear begins to leave and they're able to sleep and then hopefully they grow into sleeping without you being there. The Bible is saying that even when you walk through the darkest valley, you will not fear because you know that dad is there. You know that your father is there. When a child knows that their father or their mother is there, they know that there is nothing there is no monster, there is no imaginary things that they have picked up from the cartoon channels they're watching that will come to do anything to them. Because a child of that age knows that there is nothing that is too difficult for their parent. Mom can chase monsters away. Dad can chase monsters away. And a child of God knows that when you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, when you're going through the valley when you're going through the darkest times, that your father is there. David was able to write this psalm because he knew who God was. David knew his father. David, when he stood in front of a seven-foot Philistine that all the warriors of Israel were scared of. Is he seven or nine foot? He was a big man. This young boy looked at this giant looked at his father, looked at this giant, looked at his father. Why are you scared of this man, he says to the other guys. How can this Philistine, this uncircumcised Philistine, strike fear into you? The difference between David and his brothers, David and the warriors of Israel, they did not have the knowledge of God that David had. And so on that field, David looked at the giant. He looked at his father. He made a comparison. And he says, there is no fight here. There is no comparison here. My father is stronger than him. Hallelujah. Knowing God gives us confidence. Number two, knowing God gives us victorious living. It gives you confidence in trials. And it gives you victorious living. Romans chapter 8 verse 37 says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Paul is saying, you know, I was going to read from uh, verse 31. Because of time, I just want you to go and read from verse 31 and, and see what he's talking about, yet in all these things. But one thing I love in NLT says, the same verse, it says, Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ Jesus who loved us. Hallelujah overwhelming victory is yours. When you know God, you begin to manifest a victorious life, even in the face of persecution and some of the things that the enemy wants to throw at you. Hallelujah. Number three, when you know your God, when you fear God, you know your Father. There is something that the Bible calls peace beyond comprehension. Peace beyond understanding that becomes part of your lifestyle. The shalom of God, the peace of God comes and dwells in your life. There are people in this congregation that need to know the peace of God. You need to know the peace of God you have the other things that you need, but you are lacking peace. John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus says, I am leaving you with a gift. And this gift is the peace of mind and the peace of heart. He says, the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. 
So do not be troubled or afraid. When Jesus left, when he was leaving this physical earth, he says to his disciples and he's extended to you and I, he says that I want to give you a gift. I'm leaving you with a gift. And he says that that gift is peace of mind and heart. I am drawing upon this gift as a father. When my oldest is heading off to secondary school, and because I am well acquainted with what is going on in this world and what is going on in, in this society, God has given me peace of mind and peace of heart. Because without that, I may end up being an overbearing father. I may end up even damaging him. One of the things that we've had to do is we've had to give him a phone because I realize that he's going to need one going to school. And a few other parents are in the same situation. And if you've been here to the parenting seminar, you know my feeling about electronics. You know how I feel about the damage of these things. And so there is an anxiety that wants to creep in. And here I'm battling, I'm saying, okay, so I, I can refuse my child to have what he maybe needs, needs maybe arguable, but what all the other kids have. Or I can give it to him and I feel like I'm giving a toddler a razor blade. I feel like I'm giving a, a toddler a knife. And my wife and I, we are debating and we are praying and we're saying, what do we do when we're researching? And then I'm overwhelmed with the peace of God. He says, I'm giving you peace of mind and peace of heart. For you to know that the work that you are doing in this boy, the knowledge you are putting in him, the prayers you're investing, the word of God that you read with him every day, the fellowships that you are taking him to, you are bringing him into the house of God to serve. You are giving him the best example as a father as you can. And his mother is doing the same. You are providing a loving home. God says, now you've done your part. Let me do my part. He begins to preach the peace of mind and heart to me so that I do not walk in anxiety waiting for the worst to happen in my children's life. The same thing in my marriage because the statistics are against us. The statistics are saying that marriages are breaking apart, but I'm operating in the peace of mind and peace of heart. Same as my finances, because everything seems to say that things are not working out, that there are no opportunities, but the peace of God is speaking to me as he's speaking to you, that everything will be okay, hallelujah. Perhaps it is your, your, your health. When you begin to get to your middle ages, to the 40s, 45, 50s, you, you're always bombarded with all these statistics. Oh, 60% of this, 70% of this, 20% of this. The other day I had one in four men who be diagnosed with cancer or prostate cancer. You read that and you look at yourself and you say, I am one in four men. And especially if your life, sometimes you find you a bit clumsy and and, and, you know, if there is four men and one of them is going to break a glass, you're the one who's going to break the glass. You know one of those ones where you go to look for something. Sometimes I, I ask God, I go to look for something in ten boxes. I'm searching, I'm searching. Why does this thing end up being in the tenth box? Why didn't I start over there? And you begin to think, am I what the world calls luck? Am I lucky? And so when the world says one in four will catch cancer, the enemy begins to say to you, oh, 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 your uncle, your father. But God says that peace of mind and peace of heart. Ladies, they say if there is breast cancer in your family, then there's an increased chance. I've even had statistics as 50-50. You say that that's not what he said. The peace of God that comes from the knowledge of God. But guess what? You will only know this if you spend time to know him. Hallelujah. 
the peace of God, he is living with us that the world cannot give. So he says, do not be troubled or be afraid.